Bon dia y muy buenos días. This is Jason Greenman and welcome back to Breakouts, where I speak to leaders in business and events so we can get to know the people behind them. Today, we continue our conversation from last week with Julie Boulanger. She is the Events and Operations Manager at Ocomo, and we focus on corporate social responsibility this week, how companies can promote positive societal goals. It's an extremely interesting conversation. Julie provides great examples of CSR and how you as an individual or organization can start your very own program. We had a lot of fun recording this, so I'm excited to jump straight into it. I hope you enjoy it. So you do everything. Like you help with uh, finance, you help with accounting, with operations, organization, so many things that we that we work on. Um, mm-hmm. And you're amazing at it. You wear tons of different hats. And one of the big things important to you is uh, CSR. Um, yes. And so maybe could you just speak to what is CSR a little bit and maybe talk about some of the initiatives that uh, that are happening right now? Uh, yeah, so CSR is Corporate Social Responsibility. It's basically what every company should have in place. Um, we see it most, most often in the big companies. Uh, they try to implement um, rules and processes that are sustainable and include everything that is social. So from gender equality to ending party uh, to, I don't know. Uh, so there are so many things to think about, but uh, also having green initiatives. Mm-hmm. So um, every time that I speak about it uh, and give the example of what we do at Acomo, everybody's so surprised because we're such a small team. It's not very common to have uh, that many initiatives in terms of CSR for small um, companies. So it's... Uh, we're in a very good place in terms of this, and I'm very happy that uh, you've allowed us to push that. Mm. And I don't know, what what else should I explain here? No, <laughs> that, no that's, a, that's a good summary. It's a good summary. And I think the, the key thing there is that um, so corporate social responsibility is basically how, well, correct me on this, um, but for me, it's how a company or a business or, or an organization can dedicate some of its time or resources to things that may not be uh, revenue uh, focused. So uh, kind of like giving back um, and being a little mm-hmm. bit more uh, socially and environmentally uh, aware, no? Well, um, most than aware, it's also being true to the impact that you're having on society. Like, for example... Uh, when you do events, uh, you might have a lot of um, rubbish and single-use plastic and things like this. So you have to think that uh, this is not good for the planet. And so you have to uh, put in place a new way of having these events without uh, polluting uh, the the earth. So we've seen, for example, one of our... Um, client decided to have uh, metal, iron bottles. No, I don't remember how they yeah, called aluminum, it. Aluminum. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was really good because in the end, people can use that and refill their own water. Mm-hmm. Uh, so no plastic here. And then they can go back to uh, their uh, houses with this and they can keep on using it. So it's mm-hmm. really good because lots of these uh, attendees were actually not having uh, that type of thinking. And so this is um, one example of an initiative that is really good because then people start to slowly be more conscious about their impacts and the way they are polluting or having, for example, uh, when you have an event, there's a lot of people that are working on your event. And so you have to make sure that every uh, employee or partner that you have is respecting uh, human rights and labor rights. So it's having all of these things in mind. Sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming because there are so many things to respect. Yep. But the most important is just to take it step by step and yep. just keep on growing on the initiatives. And also like watching what other people are doing. There's There's no arm. Arm, harm, sorry. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm having troubles between arm and harm. <laughs> <laughs> Angry and hungry. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and I think benchmarking in that is really important because, I mean, we were not born knowing all of this. So you have to look at what other good things are happening. And so you can also implement them in your own company. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, um, I think that's, that's a really good point is that, you know, we, we are, we're a very small company. Um, and sometimes people associate CSR and social responsibility with large, you know, that's something for big corporates that have mm-hmm. departments dedicated to that. And, um, but the truth is, that, I mean, even if you are one person, if you're a, a freelancer, you can still be doing corporate social res- responsibility. Um, mm-hmm. It's not something that's, that's reserved for large companies. Um, like, and every little thing counts. Obviously, you can't do everything. There's way too much to do. But, you know, I think we started out by creating a list of all the different initiatives that we could get involved in. Mm-hmm quickly realized that it was overwhelming. And so that kind of narrowed our focus down, okay, these are the things that are important to us. These are going to be our priorities. Mm -hmm. And then next year, once we'll have those implemented, we'll start with something else. And what I was very happy to see is the actual, um, how do you say, enthusiasm that every person at Acomo had thinking about this and how to um, limit our impact and make it great again <laughs> yeah yeah no. <laughs> i think that's taken already that's been trademarked <laughs> um no yeah definitely I, and i think you know that's a kind of side effect of it you know the um a lot of times motivation comes from purpose and uh, working in a company and doing the same thing um you know try always trying to chase the the money and the sales um that is a good short-term purpose, but people need a bigger picture. And CSR is a great way of um, of helping people understand a, a bigger purpose, no, a, a bigger meaning to to this. Not only can we have a job in a company where we provide a great service and we like what we do, but we can also be part of an organization that is 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 doing good as well. That's that's not being selfish, that's considering society, that's considering the environment. I mean, for me, for example, I always wanted to work in an NGO, but truth is it's it's a very tough world and mm. it's hard to um, like build a life if mm. you are always traveling in different places and trying to help different communities that uh, that are supported by NGOs. And so... I have decided that I would work for a company that is not an NGO, but I would be uh, trying to push for what to me is very important. And uh, suddenly we started hearing about people that were having brownout. I don't know if you've heard about that concept. No. Uh, You know burnout? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically brownout is a new concept of burnout, but of people that are just lacking... um, a purpose in their in their life mm. and in okay. their job mm-hmm. so it's because everybody is working in in the service industry for big corporations and they're doing i don't know filing billing and all of these things and suddenly you're like well what's the point of my job right and it's it's okay to have that type of thought but then you just have to act on okay what can i do to solve this and for me what could i do for, to solve this is work for a company that is allowing me to push for these initiatives that mm. are social and on a long term goal i think everybody is interested in working for a company or working with a company that is uh minimizing its impact and mm-hmm. aware of the the arm the, the harm, sorry, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that we are doing to the planet uh, or to the people that are working with us. And mm-hmm. so we'll become better at this, hopefully. Yeah. And so let's let's get kind of into more details. And so you, I say that you are a small, a small company um, and you're you're interested in, in corporate social responsibility. Um, where where would you start? And and maybe you can use us as an example. The kind of things that we you know, how did we plan it, and how did we get into it? What what and what did we end up doing? Well, I think um, one good thing to follow, for example, is what the United Nations uh, started to develop. It's called uh, the Sustainable Development Goals. So it has seventeen goals. 
And you can look at the different um, priorities that they are pushing towards to uh, help on having a sustainable environment. Mm -hmm. uh, because when we talk about sustainable, it's funny how everybody thinks about the planet and mm -hmm. just the, um, the green initiatives. Mm -hmm. But there are so much more about it. So mm -hmm. as at Acomo, for example, I mean, as a small company, you don't always have the funds to be able to um, make a donation to uh, an association that is working on, uh, I don't know, helping the kids that are in um, in an hospital or helping the people that are in vulnerable situation without a home or uh, in a marginalized uh, place. And so we started uh, looking at the different associations that were happening uh, in Barcelona because one of the key things that we wanted to implement was actually helping uh, the local community because this is where we're having most of our events and this is where we think that we should act. So we looked at um, many options, actually. I remember trying to uh, visit some NGOs and looking at what type of volunteering we could help outside of the financial resources that we could bring them, obviously. And it's hard to find what suits you in terms of schedule, because obviously sometimes you can volunteer, but you have to volunteer at certain times and everybody has their life. So you can't all commit to the same thing. And so you just have to keep looking so you find one that you really like. And that's what happened with with us. We found the Magic Line, which is um, a walk, solidarity walk, mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, raising money for the Hospital San Juan de Deu. Mm -hmm. And also the... Um, so it's not only hospitals because they have so many different programs. And that's what we liked about them is that uh, not only they provide help in uh, for children in hospitals but also uh, to reintroduce uh, people slowly into programs uh, that uh, can reinsert people in the society when they've been living in the street for x amount of years mm -hmm. and so they bring them uh, medical care and edu educational support also mm -hmm. because some people just have lost uh, the skills that they've learned originally or they might have never been to school and they are sometimes uh, they don't know how to read and so they bring them that support and also psychological support which is mm -hmm. super important especially when you've been uh, out by yourself for a long time you start yeah. losing um, your mind uh, or mm -hmm. the way to act in mm -hmm. uh and social gatherings. So, um, so yeah, that was uh, one of the best things that we did. And so every year we raise more than a thousand euros for them mm -hmm. uh, with different initiatives like uh, baking and uh, selling those or also organizing uh, private uh, gym classes mm -hmm. with donations. And around February or March, sometimes we do the walk, uh, 10 kilometers. And so it's not about our, it's not about a competition, like who's going to arrive first. It's more the awareness that we do, uh, that we bring to people, uh, by walking all together, because I don't remember how many people, but it's a yeah. huge crowd. Yeah. And so everybody's looking at yeah, something like this. When you don't know what it is, like people sometimes stop you in the street and like, oh, well, why, why are you walking? And so you explain what the walk is about and mm -hmm. then you help having a bigger impact also. Mm -hmm. And because then next year people will be like, oh, I remember that initiative that I saw in the street last year. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sign up. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great organization. I think it was a, a really good find. And um and like you said, I think for for people considering doing this, uh, kind of our starting point was okay, where right? Because there's so mm -hmm. many things that there's so many uh, places that you could kind of spend your time and money. And we decided we wanted to do local. Um, mm -hmm. And then after where it was kind of okay, what right? What do we want to be um, helping out with? And and the magic line fit both of those perfectly. 
and they're a great organization. Um, the relationship that, that you've built with them is really strong. Um, all the, the activities that we've done, uh, we can do as a team, uh, you know, selling baked goods in the markets and, uh, mm -hmm. doing the raffles and, um, and, and then seeing it all come together in February is always really beautiful. We all, all get together, go for a walk on Monjuic. Yeah. Um, it's real team building activity, to be honest. It's really cool. Yeah. It's really cool. And then they're really good about showing, okay, this is how much money we raised. This is where all the money is going to all these different, mm -hmm. uh, um, initiatives. And yeah, it's a, it's been a real pleasure uh, doing that. And one. there's also, I forgot because uh, it's been a long time, but we've also helped them um, translate their full website into English. And I remember spending all of that time and wondering, like, what's the purpose of this? Well, the purpose is to help them because they don't have the workforce to right. have a full translation because it takes a long time to translate mm -hmm. a full website. Mm -hmm. And so we did that for them uh, completely free, obviously, yep. on our own working time. So mm -hmm. thanks for allowing me to spend <laughs> my time on this. <laughs> um, and... This helped them to have a bigger impact because, for example, around the same time, the Mobile World Congress is happening. And so some companies are bringing loads of uh, people from overseas that don't speak Spanish. So it's good for them to have the website in English mm -hmm. so they can actually participate and know what they are raising funds for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think like shortly after uh, we completed the translation, they had a massive group from mm -hmm. from the Mobile World Congress sign up. Yeah, exactly. One yep. company, uh, I don't remember which one, but uh, I think it was a group of 200 people. Yeah, I mean, that's huge. That's a, yeah. a massive, uh, massive benefit. So um, what uh, what are some of the other CSR initiatives that uh, that we've started? I know we made a list of all the ways that we're uh, we're trying to be more sustainable uh, environmentally as well. Yeah, for example, I mean, as simple as having um, recycling in your office, because in an office, there's always so many things happening. So we have five different beans, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yeah. laughs> uh, and also like working on gender equality. Um, mm -hmm. We have a partnership with a Professional Women Network mm -hmm. in Barcelona that is supporting women initiatives and women in business. Mm -hmm. And this is to um, reach, uh, finally, an inclusive society mm -hmm. where there's no difference in, um, in salaries for women. Mm -hmm. So it's another great initiative that we are doing. And I don't know, out of the top of my head, we're doing so many things right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're also recycling the coffee. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you call that? Pods? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no plastic. I mean, all the plates and, and we have mm -hmm. silverware and regular plates. There's no plastic in the office. Uh, yeah, recycling the printer cartridges. We hardly ever print. We've kind of eliminated printing. Um, we have a printer, but I think I only use it to print off uh, things for my children to color at this point. <laughs> Or when you have enough uh, a meeting at an administration for something. Exactly true. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, some some people still require some paper. Um, yeah, especially administrations. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, and then I guess recently as well, we we made a whole list, kind of relating back to the current situation. We made that list of mm -hmm. uh, all the mice companies, all the event companies that are actively contributing to the fight against the uh, the COVID nineteen. Yeah, because for me, to be honest. CSR, I mean, there's that much you can do because of your personal resources as a company or as yeah. an individual. But what is super important and what is free of charge is actually sharing the good initiatives mm -hmm. because something that you cannot do um, for any reason yourself, well, maybe your neighbor or maybe your coworker can do that on a personal time. And mm. so sharing those initiatives and giving visibility to all of these good things that are happening yeah. is so important. And it's so inspiring. Yeah. It, it yeah. gives people hope and, uh, and optimism in those tough times. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a really good point. It's, um, you know, whether that's on LinkedIn or, or Instagram or Twitter, when, when you see somebody that's, that's doing uh, something that is, uh, has a good initiative, 
it takes less than five seconds to share that, doesn't it? Exactly. Or to comment it and or to congratulate them or um and it's it's similar to the walk. The more visibility it gets, the the greater reach it has. So exactly. that's a good point. Yeah. It's uh if if you are in a position where you think, oh CSR is too big for me, I don't have the time, I don't have the resources, um you can almost always find something that uh that you can do, even if it's just sharing other good good ideas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also, like, signing petitions, it takes two minutes. You just mm-hmm. go to some of these um, websites like Amnesty International or uh, Avaz. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I know a lot of French ones, obviously. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure there's plenty that uh, you can trust, like, completely mm-hmm. and that are actually doing the, the work for you. So mm-hmm. by signing petitions, you are um, giving more power to these big organizations mm. to uh, push for great initiatives to be happening and changes mm. in the law and the constitutions and things like this. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a, uh, it's uh, it, it's like you said, it's inspiring. And, and I mean, it's amazing sometimes like the things that people assume are going to be quite small sometimes can be quite big. I mean, the, um, mm-hmm. I've completely forgotten the name, but there's the, uh, the gentleman in the UK um, in a little village that uh, was going to start walking back and forth uh, in his oh, garden yeah. to raise money. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I think uh, I was reading the, I think it was a tweet from the journalist from that village that originally was starting to promote it. And they're like, yeah, you know, if we can, if we can raise a few thousand, a uh, few thousand pounds, we're going to be over the moon. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a really nice guy. He's a veteran. Um, and she started sharing, sharing the news uh, uh, nationally in, in the UK. And the last time I checked, he raised like what, 30 five million pounds or something i don't remember the amount but it was astonishing yeah and it's a perfect example of some short sort of initiative which is uh easy it's small doesn't seem like it's a big um a big effort that you know well not a big effort for us but for him i'm sure (laughs) i don't remember how old that meant but yeah that's, yeah, I don't remember if he was. He, I think he was pushing a hundred. And uh, no, it's, <laughs> uh, it's uh, look for me right now. Walking back and forth in my uh, in my garden would be quite difficult. I'm, I'm <laughs> can't say that I'm <laughs> in the best of shape at the moment. Um, but, <laughs> well, you've been but, working uh, out with Nike and stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Well, that's what I tell you guys. That's <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're actually just watching it and <laughs> exactly. eating at the same time. <laughs> busted um, <laughs> but uh but it's a perfect example of a csr and well a personal one for him that just it blew up and people shared it and you know mm-hmm. people donated and uh, there's always there's always something to do i think the first thing is is you have to make it a priority um you know it's it's one you got to turn your words into action if it's something that you really want to do there's there's an opportunity out there for you to mm-hmm. to do something that's not just about making money, but, you know, giving back to your community or, um, or sharing positive news, whatever that is. Yeah. And there are right now happening in the world with the situation, there are so many initiatives. So yeah. it's just a matter of finding the one that speaks to you because you don't have to like the same thing as yeah. your friends. You just yeah. have to find what talks to you. So definitely. And so, um, I mean, what I might do, if you don't mind, is since you're the expert uh, in, in our group about this, is um, if people reach out to you directly, would you be willing to kind of point them in the right direction or, or yeah, help them? Yeah, of course. Yeah? Okay, I'll, I'll put that yeah, in. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, as I was saying, like sharing initiatives is so important. So for me, it's funny that you say that because I actually have so many friends that are sometimes like, okay, so I'd like to do volunteering, but I don't really know where I can get information mm-hmm. or, and so I start asking them the question, okay, what's like, you want to volunteer, but what is important for you? Mm-hmm. And for example, like, okay, I want to do something like Fridays for Future mm-hmm. uh, because uh, to me, like the climate change is horrible okay Mm -hmm. so then there are some organizations working on this and you have to look at what type of volunteering or because like gender equality is so important for me then there are other things so happy to do that for everybody cool cool that's amazing um well i think we're we're kind of getting towards the end of the time here um Mm -hmm. it's been really great you did a great job thank you 
thank you. <laughs> You're um, not bad. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, for episode number three of Breakouts, I'm just going to keep throwing it in there to see if it works. <laughs> to see if it sticks. <laughs> exactly. See if people pick up on it. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you for, for, for jumping on. And I'm sure we'll, we'll do this again. Uh, it's been really insightful. I think, uh, especially the, the corporate social responsibility. I can tell that, you know, this is a passion of yours. Mm -hmm. And um, it's important that we get that out there and, and introduce it and, and help people understand what it is and that it's super accessible that anybody can do exactly this. yeah um cool well thanks a lot yeah thank you julie um that's julie boulanger and hey. uh, <laughs> after four uh, years you still don't know how to pronounce my name <laughs> <laughs> well why don't you give it to us give it to us and then we'll sign off julie boulanger <laughs> <laughs> amazing <laughs> all right julie we'll speak to you soon speak to you soon bye 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 Thank you so much for listening, guys. This has been Breakouts with me, Jason Greenman, as your host. If you've enjoyed this, do make sure to subscribe and leave a five-star rating. As we try to get this off the ground, every little action counts. Take care, be safe, and we'll see you next week when our focus will be on wellness and the events industry. Speak soon.